I've just had a walk around um, the exhibition space with the senior curator at the, at the Welcome, um, and uh, it's it's being um, uh, installed at present. So uh, it's a work in progress, but it's incredibly exciting because the exhibition has only ever really existed on pieces of A4 paper that we've avidly discussed in meetings, and to actually see it now in the process of being installed is, is really wonderful. It's extremely exciting for us never having done this before. Day before yesterday I was in the space as it was being just partially built so far and um, it, it looks um, amazing. I mean it was really quite thrilling to see the space come in shape and to envision what the objects will be like in place. And I think when in a couple of weeks' time when it's installed, uh, which I think is the week after next, um, that will be uh, quite an emotional experience for both of us having worked on it for so long. working with um, Leslie, my co-curator on the exhibition, for um, around five years. We met at a conference, a conference that was called Making Connections, which is quite apt. And Leslie was a historian of architecture, I'm a historian of art, and we realised that we both had Vienna 1900 in common, so we decided to link up and work together on the research. My work started very much as research projects, you know, with the aim of publishing articles and books. Um, what turned this into the idea for an exhibition was really talking to Gemma Blackshaw, the other curator of the exhibition, whose work is on the fine arts. Um, and in, in the field of art history and architectural history, you often don't get these two things discussed together. But what we realized is that we both had this interest in social context, this, both had this interest in how artists and architects were drawing on um, drawing on influences from beyond the world, the, the restricted world of the arts. Well, the exhibition looks at the relationship between um, madness um, and, uh, the, and modern art in the city, looking at how um, psychiatrists brought in modern architects and designers um, into uh, innovate uh, psychiatric institutions, um, but also looking at how uh, that process was two-way and how artists were also interested in going into institutions, institutions like Steinhoff, the state psychiatric hospital that we've got a model of in the exhibition, and drawing directly from the patients that were interned there. In terms of uh, the institutions that are kind of featured in the exhibition, there, there are three really. There's uh, the an 18th century institution that is displayed in the first section of the exhibition that offers a kind of prehistory um, and that's the Narenturm, the Tower of Fools, which was an institution of confinement and claustrophobia, a cylindrical building um, of stacks of cells, um, one stacked on top of the other, um, in which patients were chained and confined. Then there, there's quite a dramatic development when you get into the early 20th century with uh, the institution that we focus on in the second section, the Steinhof Psychiatric Hospital, which was a whole city on a hill, 60 separate buildings, set in beautiful green surroundings, a completely different vision of what a psychiatric hospital could be, um, in which modern architecture was, uh, was kind of um, employed to create uh, bright, light, open spaces, um, full of light and air on, in, a, in healthy surroundings um, that would uh, take old-fashioned uh, Victorian-era people and transform them into modern people, um, make them healthier, make them stronger. This was a great ideal of modern architecture. So that's one of the arguments that's being make, made, is that that notion that might be f familiar to some people of modern architecture as a kind of social architecture, an architecture of transformation, a utopian architecture. Um, one of the roots of that is the engagement of modern architecture with psychiatry and with its ideals, especially around the institution. 
This is then seen again um, with the third institution, uh, which is per the Perkersdorf Sanatorium. The entire interior of that building was designed by the cutting edge design firm of the time, the Wiener Werkstätte, or the Viennese workshops, um, along completely clean lines, black and white, the, con the repeated motif of the square you see used. Uh, and we demonstrate that through a couple of photographs, some fabric, and also some wonderful furniture and objects from that sanatorium. One of the themes that I'm really interested in in the exhibition is the theme of the mad body. Um, I'm interested in how mainstream psychiatry in Vienna wasn't about Freud's notion of the mind. Um, it was far more um, interested in how the um, body communicated mental illness. So doctors and psychiatrists were um, interested in opening up um, dead bodies to discover the root of nervous disorder through autopsies. Um, they were also interested in um, treating the body of the mentally ill patient through air, light, exercise, diet. Um, and one of the particular focuses of one of the sections of the exhibition is to look at how doctors were also keen on using photography to capture the image of the naked, um, mentally ill patient. Photographs of these patients were collated into journals and then distributed um, throughout Europe. And what's fascinating for us was that they didn't just reach medical audiences, they were also increasingly geared towards artistic audiences. There was the expectation that artists would use these photographs of patients um, to come up with a new vocabulary of the body, one that was distorted, um, diseased. So I think psychiatrists like Charcot um, wanted artists to be looking at these source books to come up with new ways of representing the human figure in art. When the exhibition is actually on, I think we'll both be very interested in, uh, in eavesdropping on what people are saying about it and reading the, the guest comments. Um, because we are used to writing for a very restricted audience, an academic audience, other specialists in the field. Uh, and the idea of, um, of presenting our argument to a wider public will be very interesting for us. We fully expect that there will be aspects of what we're trying to do that won't get across to people and others that will come across that we never even expect never even thought of. I'm hoping that audiences will see the contemporary relevance of the show. We tend to think that we're the only ones to have lived in stressful, um, anxiety-inducing modern times. Um, but actually, just over a hundred years ago in Vienna, there were exactly the same kinds of anxieties about the modern environment, about overcrowding, about too much sex, too much alcohol, too many cigarettes, and all of those things that I think we worry about um, were, were actually, those were concerns that were being worked out over a century ago in another modern city. Mm -hmm.